Hey everybody out there, don't change your dials, don't change your computer. This is Jim Howard with Trinity Security Allies, where our ministry is your church's safety. You can find out more about us on trinitysecurityallies.com. Every Sunday we do a 30-minute Facebook Live. Let us know where you are from, and we're going to get started. Today's topic, this is a public safety announcement. All right, enough. Mask. Our church was getting ready to reopen in uh, July the 5th, and then we had an uptick of the uh, issues. And, of course, a lot of the counties in Florida have now started to require masks. I, I have fought this for oh so long. I have not wanted to do a mask. I've been against masks. I know that there's pros for masks and there's pros against masks. You can send emails all you want about telling me about whether it's good or bad, but, but, I'm going to try to help you with this, okay? We need to do something to get this out of our life. We need to do something to get this virus away from us. So if we sheltered in place, we, we, we closed our doors to our churches, we didn't show up, let's do something, okay? If they say wearing masks will help shorten the life of this virus or will help not have it spread i'm all for it and we need to get over it because really to tell you the truth you know i i fought it because i thought it looked stupid i still don't, i'm still not crazy about it but if i can help help at all i will do more than my share to wear this mask hey i went out and got a really cool one you know the american flag i mean i i I've got another one. I couldn't find a Blue Lives Matter, but I got one that's got a red stripe on it from my far, farmer brothers and sisters out here. But you know, the, you know, the funny thing about it is, is that when we were growing up, we wore masks all the time. I mean, Halloween, we put a mask on. You know, when we played cowboys, if you look at Russell or Remington paintings, they always had a bandana. This is no more than a modified bandana. And in the late 60s, we had the Rat Patrol. How many of y'all remember that? We had Sergeant Sam Troy out there chasing, you know, on Jeeps uh, with machine guns on the back, going through the desert looking for the Germans, and Captain Hans Dietrich uh, chasing him around, uh, around the whole area. So, you know, then we get into the 90s and we have ninjas. But yet, when we're asked to wear it for public safety issues, we, we draw a line in the sand. Get over it. Man up or shut up. OK, help help out this country and our churches and let's curve this thing down to where we're not spreading it, wear the mask when needed, wear the mask when required and get over it. Ladies, make it a fashion statement. Make it go with all your outfits. There's plenty of places out here that sell some really cool looking masks, but get with the mask. Let's get it together, folks. Let's try to help out. Let's make, let's do everything we possibly can to curb this. I have now taken it upon myself to get out here and every time I go somewhere, I'm going to be wearing a mask. You know, a mask and a gun might get you killed, but a mask has never gotten anybody killed by just wearing it. But this virus will kill you. And yes, please don't send me your letters and your cards and your things like that, that this is a political ploy and all those things like that. I don't really care. I don't really care right now. I do know, and I have friends in the medical profession that are telling me about people who do have the virus. And we do know of people that have died that had the virus. So we have to take this seriously just for a minute. And if it helps us get back into our churches, put on the mask. Now, one of the other things I wanted to talk about, uh, I, I, I really, I mean, just this last couple of weeks has been really difficult for me. Uh, I've been watching this country kind of fall apart on saying things like defund police departments or get rid of the police departments, that all policemen are bad. Well, if you say that all policemen are bad, then you have to include me and my brothers who were police officers uh, with me in, um, in Norfolk. Now, when we teach putting together a safety plan and developing a safety team, one of the things that we talk about and stress in there is having local law enforcement involved in your plan. Put them in your plan. Make sure that they know what you're doing and get to know them. 
I don't think churches really understand what's going on right now, but we're about to get hit in all of this, this stuff that's going on. There have been attacks on cities. There's been attacks on monuments. The next thing you know, there's going to be attacks on churches. Now, they've already started. It's just that we, we haven't seen what I feel like we're going to see. Now, I belong to a group that we talked about it this week, and we talked about, you know, what do we do in case of these things like that? I'm going to get back to this again. Make friends with your local law enforcement. Get out here and invite them to your church. Get to know them. We're supposed to witness to everybody, so let's witness to these officers, those that do not know Christ, then they, we have an opportunity to help them become Christians and get to know Christ. We have an opportunity to help lead. We know that the Holy Spirit will move them. But let's show them what type of people we are. And let's make sure that we tell them that our property is a church, a police-friendly, a law enforcement-friendly piece of property. If you have a good-sized piece of property like we do, tell the canine guys that they can come and run their dogs out there. If you have a nice piece of property that they can come and sit and do paperwork, because what a lot of people don't realize, in the past, we used to do our paperwork in the office because we didn't have typewriters and things like that or computers and stuff in the car. Now we do all of our stuff in a car. So to be able to do a report, it may take us a little time. And wouldn't it be nice if law enforcement officers knew that they had a safe place and that safe place was at your church? Wouldn't that be special? Wouldn't that be neat? That you would, you would drive by your church at nighttime and see an officer there because he knows it's safe? Invite him in. There have been some churches that have made rooms for officers where there's a bathroom. They've given them a key where there's a bathroom where they can come in and get coffee. They have a coffee maker right there that they can make coffee. But do something and get your local law enforcement together. Get with them. Start to support them. We need them because, let me explain it to you another way. DHS sent out a warning to all churches that we need to make sure that we dust off our security plans because of the climate that they're seeing out here, the hate speech that's being talked about, the different things that are being said online. Now, there's no, been no threats through the Department of Homeland Security. But then we have Black Lives Matter activists, and I won't even say his name, he wrote a tweet, a Twitter post that says, yes, I think the statues of white European that they claim is Jesus should come down. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. He goes on to say that all murals and stained glass of white Jesus and European mother and their friends should come down. That's an attack on the church. You know, I, I, I had to laugh at that because... Black Lives Matters put this out here, and I guess they may think that Christ was black. He wasn't in that area. He was dark-skinned, don't get me wrong. He was olive color. You know, they talk about that he probably didn't have long hair. He probably had short hair. I mean, if you study this, if you look at it, he probably had short hair. There's many reasons why. Cleanliness, you know, one thing. You know, it was very difficult to have long hair like that. And plus, there, there are certain parts of the religion that did not have longer hair. There were others that did have long hair. If we talk about Samson, that's why he grew his hair long. It was a part of his, his devotion to God. But yet, he probably had a beard. But he didn't have blue eyes, I can tell you that. But it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Christ, to have an image, is not who we're supposed to be worshiping. That is just art. That is an artist's conception. That is something that somebody looks at and says, that's their vision of Jesus Christ. It started way back in the Roman time. The Roman Catholics did it way back, way before us. We had nothing to do with this. But yet, we have these people right here that are talking about going and destroying your stained glass, your structures. Next will be the cross, because they're going to tell you that that's white supremacy, which it isn't. It's for all people. It does not matter the color. God does not see color. We as Christians should not see color. We need to get past this point. But let's get back to what we're talking about. You're going to have attacks on your church. So wouldn't it be nice if you had friends with the police department? Let me ask you a question. Because those of you that think that we need to disband the police departments or defund them, let me just ask you a question, just a hypothetical question here. 
The job that you have right now, when you got up every day to get ready to go to work, you had to put on a uniform. Now you might say, well, I put on a uniform right now. But do you put on a bulletproof vest? Do you, do you strap on a weapon, pepper spray, and a taser? Then when you get to work, every client that you see has the potential of trying to fight you or even kill you. Now you're insurance guys, somebody comes in, a potential client, you don't say the right words or you tell them no and the next thing you know you're fighting for your life you know you i don't know uh, doctors mechanics all these people like this is this something that you are prepared to do you know and and here's the thing in police work you don't have the choice to pick your clients see we get these calls they're called calls for service and these calls for service we have to go there we, we don't get to say, no, you know what, dispatch, I've decided I don't want to go to that drunk call. I know this guy, and he, he's thrown up on my uniform before. I'm not, I'm not going to go handle that drunk. We can't tell them that we're not going to go to the accident where there may be a fatality, maybe a child. We can't tell them no. Domestic violence, we have to go. That's, that's their job. That was, our, that was my job when I was there. Assaults, whether they're physical or sexual, you have no choice. You have to go. Now, would you go to those type of clients? Is that the type of work that you do? Go and see children who are hurting or afraid. And even when you're off, if you don't change your uniform at the station and you drive home and you stop to get gas, you still have an opportunity of somebody trying to kill you, which has happened. Officers have been executed at gas stations because they think they're going home and they kind of let that little bit of situational awareness drain a little bit. And then all of a sudden they find themselves in a terrible situation. And it just doesn't happen at the job. You have to understand that when we take it off and we go, you, your wife works for a company and, or your, your husband works for a company and you end up going to one of their parties. As soon as they find out who you are, they want to tell you about the jerk policeman that pulled them over. Now, they don't tell you that they were doing 100 miles an hour on the interstate. They don't, they don't tell you that part, or they've had too much to drink. It's always the jerk policeman that pulled them over. Then you get to a point to where nobody wants to talk to you because they think that the only thing that you can talk about is your police job. But yet, we have families. We like sports. We like vehicles. We, we, we like everything that everybody else does, music. But yet, they don't feel like they can talk to you because the only thing you want to talk about, or they've already put up that wall, he is a policeman a policewoman, and, you know, just can't have any conversation. You, and, and let me throw the, the, the great thing out here. The average salary for a police officer in the state of Florida is 37000 So you that are making five, six digits in your office, your work, that's not what a police officer does. And they have to handle all those things that we're talking about above it. It's no wonder that law enforcement officers are losing their minds. It's no wonder that we have some of these issues that are going on out here because of the things that they see. You know, we had people coming back from war, and, and, and we talked about PTSD. We forgot that officers see a lot, too, and that they also have PTSD. I have a really good friend of mine, just one of my Christian brothers that I love more, more than, I mean, he is such a brother to me. And he has PTSD, and he can't get past it. He can't get past it. And it scares me, and it worries me. And I try my best to be with him as much as I possibly can, because he is a good man. But what are we as the church doing for our officers today? Have we turned a blind eye to them, or are we picking up the phone and calling them and asking them to come out to our church? Make it special. Get to know every policeman in your area. Every policeman in your area that's in your area, have them come over. Get to know their names. Find out about their families. Find out where they came. Find out if they go to a church. Find out if they're Christian. And pray for them. Pray over them if you get an opportunity. You know, we respond to calls for service. We, it doesn't matter to us. I mean, we respond. But I don't think you understand when it's personal. We respond a lot faster. Now, you may say that's wrong. We're only human. We're only human. And if we know somebody that is at that building that is in danger, we respond. We, we're, we're, we're there, we see, it seems like faster. Now, 
I, I, I know that y'all have stood out here and you've said that there's bad apples out here. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. But let me say this. There are bad apples in every occupation you want to look at. You point at one occupation and tell me where there wasn't a bad apple. Even Jesus Christ's 12 had one bad apple. There are bad apples in every occupation you know of. When I first went to Bel Air, I had an anesthesiologist that had lost his mind and started vandalizing and wanting to kill other anesthesiologists in his office. We, we, we see attorneys that are bad. We see, we, see, we see church pastors. We see youth leaders that fall because they're out there. They're human, just like anybody else. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I see? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah 6, 8. See, y'all think, if you truly believe that God has a plan, you think that a lot of these people do these things because they were bullied as a kid and they want to have some authority. They were robbed, like me, and got into police work. They had a family member that was a police officer and they did the family tra tradition. No, God has this for them. They are special type of people. There are people out here that would die for you. Would you die for your neighbor? Would you die for your brother? You might die for your family, but they'll die for a stranger. So we as the public, we as churches, we as people that are out here, we need to be doing something more. We need to step up to the plate we need to make sure that every time we see a law enforcement officer, walk over to them and ask, tell them to have a good day and thank you for their service. And is there anything you can pray for them? They talk about reform. They get out here and they just have this thing about reform. Let's agree on something. Let's agree on something. First off, let's agree what happened to George Floyd is a terrible, terrible, terrible tragedy. It, it, I, I can't even comprehend what happened that day. I really cannot. I mean, I forced myself to watch the video because I just could not believe what had happened. But let's talk about reform. Let's talk about reform for a second. Reform starts at home also. Because if you're going to go out and drink and drive, you're putting yourself into a position to where you're going to have a run-in with the law. So maybe we need to look at reform at the home. Yes, we can talk about the police department. Sure, I have no problem with that. I am more than willing to listen to anybody that wants to talk about ideas of ways that we can help the communities come together and serve both sides. We need to be serving our police officers. Christ served. He didn't come to win wars. He came to serve. These people are out here to serve, and so are we. As Christians, we're supposed to be out here serving. And if this doesn't, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, when people come to me and they say, you know, gosh, you know, the police department is so bad, it's so corrupt, blah, no, no, no. There's 800,000, over 800,000 law enforcement officers out here. Not every one of them get up in the morning and think what they're going to do to hurt somebody. You know what we normally get up and think about? When we get up and think about and put our uniforms, you know what we think about more than anything else? And that is coming home in the afternoon. That is coming home to our families, kissing them goodbye and hoping that this is not the last day that we get to see them. For us Christians who were police officers, we prayed as we went that he would protect us. Really, the thing I prayed more than anything else was to protect my family. I knew he was watching over me. But I also asked for his will to be done. And I also asked for people to see him in me. I wanted people to know that I was a Christian by my actions alone. I would treat you like I want you to treat me. Yes, was I the biggest duck in the pond of jumping into a fight? That I was. I was a cowboy for a long time. I really was. But the thing of it is, is I can tell you that I, I was I was number one in my district in my in my platoon on writing summonses, but I can tell you right now I stopped. I, I wrote fifty percent of the people I stopped. 
50% of the people I let go because they were you and me. And they treated me like me. And they, they, we had a conversation. And if it was a minor infraction, it was, please, be careful. Don't do it again. So, you know, it's hard for us when we get out here, when we get out on the street, when, when we're out here working as hard as we possibly can to survive. I mean, that's the number one thing that sometimes we're thinking about. But also the next person we stop may be that person or the next call that we go to, that next domestic violence that we go to may be our last one. We don't know. And so we have to be a live wire during all of this. What happened to Floyd was a tragedy, but I have to go back. I have to go back and I have to look at this for a second. I have to look at the reality of the thing. I have to look at all of it. I cannot just take the part where the police officer did his, his, his terrible thing. I have to look at all of it. And Floyd, it was the perfect storm. Floyd, who had a checkered past, went to, to uh, it was a forgery charge of some sort, whether he was passing a counterfeit bill or writing a bad check, I'm not really for sure, whichever one it was, but he was on drugs. He was on drugs. He was on meth and fentanyl. This is, this, this, he was on drugs. So it was the perfect storm. And let me make this perfectly clear. It was Satan's perfect storm. Satan put that together. Satan let that happen because he knew that the only way that he could destroy this country is to split us up by race. We're not going to get into race tonight. We're going to talk about law enforcement. Not all police officers. 90% of them are great. Yes. Like I said, there's bad apples in every career that you want to look at. But go out. Go out. Walk with them. Go out. Do a ride-along. See what they have to go through. See what they have to put up with. Understand the reality of what is going on out here and appreciate that they are willing to die for you. I don't know of any other profession except for military and fire that people are willing to die for you. I just don't. So when you take that in consideration, we as the church need to be watching over these people because they are the ones that are going to protect our houses of worship. They are the ones that are going to protect our congregations. They are the ones that are going to be responding when we have an emergency at our church. But yet you want to defund them. You know, we, we can take a look at uh, the place in Seattle, and we see that rapes happen. You know, they get rid of the police. We don't need the police. We can handle it ourselves. No, rapes happen. Uh, murders happen. Shootings happen. They couldn't handle it themselves. We've seen an uptick of crime because departments are, are pulling in to survive. They're, 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 they're tired. They're worn out. They've been out here doing this for a while. You see experienced officers retiring because they don't want to be under the microscope that they're under right now. And we as a church need to take a stand right now to help out our departments. Contact your police department and talk to them. Tell them, you know, if there's anything that we can do, please use our property. Please use our property to do your reports. Please use our property to run your dogs. Come to our property and find a safe haven. Isn't that what Christ said? Come to me, those who are weary. They're tired. They need our support. We need to make a stand right now. And we need to make sure that they understand that we are there for them. I don't know how else to say this. I really don't. I just want you to understand that we, we cannot do this alone. But I'm going to throw one more at you. I'm going to throw one more at you because I've got a couple more minutes. Even the Bible tells us we need to be doing this, whether you realize it or not. Because Romans 13, 1 through 7 states, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Do you understand what it's saying here? God is in control. God is in control. He establishes these authorities. 
yes, we vote, we do things like that, we, we get out here and we do these things, but you don't, if you truly believe as a Christian that God has a plan, God can use anybody that is in the White House. He can use anybody. He used the Internet that we've been saying for a long time is the devil's play, play, playground to expand our churches when they try to shut us down. He can use anything. So understand the authorities that, ha that have been established by God. It goes on to say, consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is, a re is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers who hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from fear of the one of authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the soul for no re the sword for no reason. They bring God's servants, angels, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoers. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes for authorities or God's servants who give their full time to governing. It should have been a little thing there that says who give their full time and lives to governing. Give to everyone what you owe. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. I, I really hope that you're, you're paying attention to this right now because we live in dangerous times. We're, we are going to see more and more assaults on our churches. I just cannot stress that enough. And unless we are prepared and get help, the help that we need, and that is in our law enforcement, our first responders, our paramedics, all those people like that, we need to make sure that we're there for them. Because if not, who do we have to call when those incidents happen? Who are you going to call? You know, you may think, well, my church safety, uh, we are all carrying guns and we've got it all under control and everything like that. No, you don't. Because you don't have the medical team that's going to be needed in case something like that happens inside your church. You also don't have the, the, the way to reach in and try to rebuild what you have there. This is the government. This is the people that are out here. This is the ones that are working for you. So make sure that this week, if you see a police officer, you stop and tell them that you really appreciate what they're doing, that you thank them very much. A friend of mine, I, I, I thought about a friend of mine, uh, Steve, if you're on, I saw you the other day at uh, Outback. Uh, three officers came in and was having dinner and you picked up their check. You beat me to it because I was about to do it. That's what we need to be doing. We need to let these people know that we care. We need to let these people know that we care. So please, this week, go out. If you see an officer, stop by. Tell him, thank you for what he does. And ask him, what can you pray for him? What is it that you can pray for him? He needs to know that we're out here. And he needs to know that we're with them. Talk about a little bit about, just a little bit about uh, Training Security Allies. You do know that we're a nonprofit. We're out here looking for financial partners because we want to get the word out. We know that over 90% of our churches are 500 or less and 60% are under 100. And we want to reach that 90%. We do have resources on our page, free resources. We have developing a safety team, putting together a safety team, carrying weapons in church, and Sunday morning, what to look for. These are ebooks. We also do have uh, our YouTube page where you can go out and if you did not have a chance to catch this or you want to share this with somebody, they can see it from our YouTube page. Uh, Zoom webinars, we will not have one again this week. I'm sorry, we've got a lot of things going on. But July, uh, Thursday, July the 9th, we will be doing a situational awareness. Now, in the middle of the month, we're driving to Texas and we're going to see if we can't get some people from Southern Springs to come out on, on our webinar. But it will be on a Wednesday night because we're leaving Thursday morning. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank you for those that listened and, uh, you know, listened to me rant. Uh, I pray that you'll think about what I said and that you'll take the stand. And even if it's just wearing a mask out here to help us out, 
see a police officer, law enforcement officer, state trooper, Pasco, uh, I mean a sheriff, anybody. Tell them how much you appreciate it. Tell your children, these are the good guys, and ask if we can pray for them. Be safe and be blessed. I'll talk soon. Bye.